G-I-A-N, I think. Prepared to answer and prepared, more prepared to answer. <laughs> oh, just excellent. And, and if we could all have his way with words and explaining, it would be wonderful. But if you have not read those, um, whether you're a volunteer at wherever or not, excellent, excellent, excellent. And, and, and things, you'll get ideas of things that, oh, I can see myself saying that. You know, I mean, they're really practical. Um, who had a question? Barb? No, I was going to tell you that verse. My oh. Phone, my phone told me. She's got a magic oh, phone. First Peter 3.15. 1 Peter 3.15 is about being prepared to answer that one? All right. Thank you. Those magic phones are worth something, aren't they? Um, now, we're to the point where it says, and we've got, what, 10 minutes maybe? Oh, we are. We just might be getting done on time, folks. Um, have participants think of someone and one very specific way that person let her light shine and others, primarily others outside the church, uh, saw Jesus. Think of an example of someone you know who maybe you would always wanted to be able to witness like they do or whatever. Give an example of, of just one way that they their life, not just how they say it, but their life really shows Jesus, either to you or to somebody else. Barb? Um, one of our counselors at the Flint Center, her husband was recently diagnosed with a rare terminal form of cancer. And she was able to post on her Facebook page a Bible passage that gave her strength. OK. Facebook. Um, a, a, friend who her husband was diagnosed with cancer she's posting on her facebook page bible verse or maybe yeah. she does this regularly different ones that give her strength other people out there that she's friends with are going to read that see that that's part of who she is and they're going to notice yes like tim tebow tim tebow okay or or some other famous person who he, yeah, he's not afraid to say where he's coming from and, and give credit to God. And because of his position of, of you know, being famous, uh, he's, that, that message is getting out to a lot. And his life backs it up, doesn't it? And, and people notice that. And, and I'm sure people are looking well, as hard as they can look when somebody's like that, looking for any little thing they can pull out and, and, and drive those nails in. That's where our, you know, we need to clean up our own life so that we have a position to stand on. But also when they pull out something from past, oh, remember what you did back at night, you know, that was the past. And, and that's your opportunity to talk about God's forgiveness, grace, new life, new chance. Um, any other examples? Yes? My mom, my mom, I've just always respected her. She's the kind of person that puts her energy and her time where her mouth is, similar to the passage of okay. James that talked about, you know, just say, be warm and well fed. She's the person that if you've had surgery, we'll bring that meal, we'll show up to your house, we'll offer to drive you to that appointment. And she also, um, she's a sonographer and scans for eyewitness for life ultrasound for abortion-minded women. Like, I just, she puts her time okay. and energy where her words are. Impacted. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I can repeat all that for the videotape. <laughs> but her mom puts her words into action. And I think you mentioned James. I jotted that question, or that verse down, what I could remember about don't just, oh gosh, what was it? Don't just say keep warm and well fed. Uh, if you're not going to do anything to help that person. Um, her mom does bring meals to somebody who's been in the hospital or, or, you know, whatever. And she's not just saying nice words. She's doing it. And that's, and when you see that in your mom, my guess is you learned how to do that yourself. <laughs>
Yeah. 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 In 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 that passing our faith on to our kids. Um, when you see it come back in your kids, that's really cool. Yeah. That's off topic, and I'm getting weary. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. The the verse um, Matthew 25 37 to 40 that talks about um, Jesus separate or on Judgment Day separating the sheep from the goats and and he says when I was in prison you came and visited me and when I was sick you helped me out and when I was naked you clothed me and the people said um, they said to him Lord when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink when did we see you a stranger and invite you in needing clothes and clothe you when did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you the king will reply I tell you the truth whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine you did for me now these people were even unaware that they had done these things until it was pointed out and they're like well when did we do that that was just part of what they did and who they were they weren't doing it to put on a show they weren't trying to oh got to do these good deeds to get some extra points with God they just did it and and yet um, when they were doing that for others God was noticing they weren't unintentional they were they were really putting the, their money where their mouth is or, or whatever um, any other examples of, of someone that you know who you know a specific way yes one of our counselors has cancer and she has a has a job where she works with a number of other young women who are buddhist and she has a caring bridge page and every day that she posts to it she makes sure she quotes a bible verse and gives credit to god in spite of whatever she's going through she praises him for the progress she's made um, hoping that these buddhist people will see that and okay so uh, uh someone who's who has cancer and is going through that herself is in a group there's other buddhist people and and in her sharing is this like a support group for caring cancer bridges people is caring bridges except it's done through the medical Oh, I've, okay, I've seen those things. Um, it, it's like Facebook, but it's through the medical, you know, maybe the whatever facility they're with has those care pages or whatever that's called. And, and so it's, it's, you know, anybody who wants to get updates on their medical condition and that kind of stuff. And so she's posting a Bible verse each time that other people, because they have the same cancer or they, they just you know, I've heard about her situation or whatever, are seeing that each time they go to her page, and um, hearing her encouragement. And how many times have we known somebody who's going through cancer or whatever other tragic situation, uh, lost a loved one, and and the strength that they give others because the strength they've received from Jesus, and the way that that God can use that. To really, you know, it's the, that all things work, you know, God works all things for the good of us because we love him and he's going to use that awful thing as a way to, to minister to others sometimes. And that's, that's a wonderful example. Yes? An unlikely place I found last week was a client who two days prior had come in frustrated and not really angry, but just wondering why, why, when I'm doing everything right, why is God still doing this and punishing me? And there were no human reason to give her because it wasn't fair. And when we pointed out the unfairness of the cross, she still was not happy, so we gave her the book of John, and gave her a book of, um, there was a book we had there in the desk, and it just had various scripture passages in it, nothing specific, but passages that like just encouraging we talking, verses. You know, the old classic passages, you know, <laughs> you might want to have. So I said, you know, take these home. I don't know the answers, but I know that God does. Mm -hmm. Two days later, she comes in, and her face,
just at everything. And, she, and while she's folding clothes, she looks at me and she goes, by the way, you gave me two books to read last night. I read them. I instantly felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> and she just, she I'm sorry. I think she kind of almost glowed. And I just smiled. She goes, they really helped. I really feel better. She goes, and I don't know why I was so whiny. This woman's a recovery, this woman's a recovery meth addict who's still going through. Recovery. Her, she is still in the middle of recovery. And she's in the middle of, she has every reason to whine and complain. She okay. has every earthly reason not to have the light of God shine in her face. And yet she did because God used his word in her heart. And she had a change. All right. Wonderful. To summarize for the videotape, <laughs> a client who was going through awful things, wondering why is God punishing her and what's the reason behind it all, and he said, I don't know the reason. I, you know, <laughs> And you gave her a book, and, and one just was a book full of Bible verses that you know, had encouragement, and she actually read them, and maybe because of the point she was at, she was willing to look it up and read it, um, but came back and said what a wonderful difference it made and she was glowing that uh, she had freedom, she had I don't know, yeah, I peace. Had, Maybe it was peace. calm in her head in for months. Yeah, yeah, and, and that she pointed it to was, those books that you gave her <laughs> is where she found uh, that, that encouragement and, and maybe healing part, part of her healing. Um, the last little bit um, is to think of one or two ways that, that and, and we don't have to share all these, but one or two ways that, that you've tried to do this in your life, and then write down a couple things that you heard from the suggestions today, something you want to start putting into your daily habits. Um, just, you know, the things that I thought of, uh, you know, besides your, I go to church, I read my Bible, <laughs> all those daily habits that, that we think of, um, something, a couple things that I did um, in my life that when my kids were little and, you know, some, sometimes it's a hard thing to put daily devotions into, you know, get that up and going in your family. When they were little, we always read stories before nap time and before bedtime. Well, I've got three kids and they each got a book or, or you know, when it's just the one or two older ones that, that weren't babies. Uh, you know, one of those books had to be a Jesus story and one of them could be, you know, Dr. Seuss or whatever. And so every, it, at least one before nap time and one before bedtime, we were having I didn't know it then, a little devotion time, because we would be reading about um, God. And that made it very easy then when they got a little older and, you know, elementary and, and up to, they were too old for bedtime stories, but we replaced it with, we'd read a part of the Bible or, or even a, a part of a movie that was a, a Jesus movie um, before bedtime, and we still do that. And so it was an easy transition. That was one of those, you know, kind of daily habits that we put in place in our family that worked and, and made it an easy way to, again, teach my children. Yes? If, if I may say a word to each of you, the sister needs some attention. You're doing a wonderful thing in what you're doing in uh, running these counseling centers and giving such wonderful advice. In line with uh, what uh, the topic has been and what you have been doing, I would urge you to try to do it in a spirit which Paul stated it when he said, uh, I have been crucified with Christ, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And this in tune with what you all learned when you went to catechism class, I believe that I cannot by my own thinking or choosing believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel. 
and enlighten me with his gifts and sanctify me in, his, in the truth, in God's word. And in that context, this uh, particular verse with which you started, uh, let your light shine, that follows shortly after Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, uh, wherewith shall it be salted again? It's good for nothing except to be thrown out and trampled by men. And right after that, he carries through. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds, etc. And right after that, he comes and tells us about himself. Don't think I came to abolish the law and the prophets, he says. I did not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And then he says, this is what you should be, this is what you will be doing when you have that new righteousness with which I'm clothing you. Unless you have a righteousness that is better than that of the Pharisees and the, and the uh, teachers of the law, he says, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And that's with this passage with which he closes this particular statement here. That's Matthew 5, 20. I was quoting from Matthew 5, chapter, chapter 5, verses uh, 13 to 20. Follows right after the, uh, uh, the Beatitudes, which conclude with the thoughts, you're going to go through persecution. You're going to have heavy persecution, not only... Not only did this happen in the past, but you're going through that, you apostles. And in that context, he says, don't worry about it. You are the salt of the earth. Don't become unsalty. But let that salt continue to work, the testimony you continue to give. But as you do that, remember, it's not really you. It's Christ living in you. It's not really you. It's the Holy Spirit who gives you the power to do that. And in that context, I would certainly urge you strongly, all of you, to continue to testify that faith in, a, in, a, in a regard to a problem that's gigantic in this world, where by the millions we commit Holocaust every year. Mm -hmm. And we are part of that with our tax contributions. Mm -hmm. We can't help it. We are part of that. But we're in the midst of that. So, yes, we should continue to speak out on these issues. Do it with a heart full of faith that the Holy Spirit has given you. Amen. Very good conclusion, right? Yes. Thank you, Pastor. I, I'm sorry, I won't try to summarize that one. <laughs> I, I, I guess, you know, to, to say that, that we're crucified to Christ, it's not us who's doing it, it's God, Jesus, who's doing it in us and through us and, and in spite of us. <laughs> and, uh, well, the, the other... Okay, the, the, the salt and the light, that was from Matthew. The crucified in Christ, where is that from? That's Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20, yeah. if you want to write that down. I think that, that is very fitting to remind us that, oh, it's not just I have to try harder to, to live this way. That righteousness that he wants us to have is what he's giving us and, and expects us to And if I may add to that, to that use. is really the key passage, that passage what you just referred to, Matthew 5 20. You've got to put that and understand that first before you go through the Beatitudes and this salt and light speech of Jesus and his coming to fulfill the law and the prophets for us. Right. So, so yeah. that righteousness we have, that's the only way we get it because Jesus gives it to us. Yeah. There's no, no other righteousness we can use to, to, to supplant that. Right. Or any other. And, and that's why I didn't want it to be a workshop where I stand up here and I say, well, this is, these are all my ideas of how uh, to live your life and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, because if it starts to be where we're looking at ourselves, well, I did pretty good here and, and I'm not so bad there. Oh, that's a good idea. I can do that. Um, but to really think about how we've seen that in other people and you know, what's so noticeable, what's so striking about that, why does that work for them? And then, again, try to use that as our encouragement. It can be done, and certainly that it's because God's going to use that in us and through us, and like I said, in spite of us sometimes, 
um, to accomplish his purpose. And that's, that's not only our goal, but that's, that's his goal. Um, if we could all end with Ephesians 6. Did I write this on yours? Ephesians 6, 19 to 20? Yes. Is that on the bottom? Okay. If we could read this together, um, because, um, you know, I think, I think we can all pray this for each other and ask for your prayers, you know, for ourselves. Pray also for me that whatever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fiercely make known the mystery of the gospel. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should and to not be afraid that my life or my past is going to mess it all up either. Um, thank you very much. And if you have questions, if you didn't catch some of those verses and want to write them down, I, I do have most of them up here unless it was one somebody thought of. And uh, hopefully we're decently on time and can have a break. Move on to your next one. <laughs>